welcome to Hollywood. The Armed Forces Radio and Television Service brings you the Hollywood Radio Theater, starring Anne Blythe and Charles Bickford in Song of Bernadette. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we present Song of Bernadette, another of our 20 greats. It's the story of a simple peasant girl whose tremendous faith lifted her to eternal fame. Based on the fine book by Franz Werfel, the 20th century Fox picture achieved true dramatic beauty. And as our stars, we have that lovely and sensitive artist, Anne Blythe and Charles Bickford repeating his memorable screen performance. Now, act one of Song of Bernadette, starring Anne Blythe as Bernadette and Charles Bickford as Father Peyrabal. Those who believe in God, no explanation is necessary. For those who do not believe in God, no explanation is possible. This is the story of Bernadette Subiru, a young peasant girl, simple, uneducated, who lived in the town of Lourdes in southern France. The year is 1858, a bad year for Bernadette's father, out of work now for many weeks. Francois, this money, where did you get it? A day's work. Where? You didn't beg. Worse. The dirt and garbage from the hospital had to be carted away and burned. That's the kind of job they give to Subiru. Where are the children? They'll be home when they get hungry. Bernadette? She seemed better today. She went to school with Marie, but she didn't know her catechism. How can she learn when she's sick half the time with asthma? Father Piramal gave them all holy pictures. Mr. Therese made Bernadette return hers. Maybe now she'll study harder. She should be studying now, but she wanted to go with Marie and her friend to get firewood. We could do with a little wood. It's freezing in here. Bernadette, come on. I'm coming. Well, hurry, will you? The trees are over the hill, Jean. We'll find the most wood by the trees. What place is this? It's called Massa Biel. See that smoke? That's the dump pile where they burn rubbish. But it's so rocky here, and... Look, there's a cave. Oh, there's lots of caves in the rocks. We used to come over here all the time. Sh should we look for wood together or each by herself? Jeanne's coming with me. You sit here and rest. Oh, but I'm not tired. You don't want another sick spell tonight. Come on, Jeanne. Stay here till we get back, Bernadette. Oh, but three can carry more than two. Well, then look around the rocks. Maybe you'll find some wood there. Marie knows there's no wood here. Only... Only... Someone's on the rocks. Madame? Madame? Who are you? She's smiling at me. A lady. So beautiful. So beautiful. She'd sneak off. She probably... Oh, there she is. Bernadette, come on. We've got to go home. What's she kneeling for? Bernadette, what are you doing? She's not moving. Holy Mother, maybe she's dead. If she's just trying to be funny, I'll... What's the matter? That's what we're asking you. I thought the asthma had killed you. Were you in that cave? Who was it? <laughs> if I tell you, you must swear not to give me away. I swear. Now, tell us. I saw a lady. She was all in white. A lady? And she wore a blue girdle and had a golden rose on each foot. I've never seen anything in my life so beautiful. What would a lady be doing in a filthy place like that? I don't know, but she was there. Come on, let's get away from here. And she ran all the way 
slow, Mama. We could hardly catch up with her. We got the wood, Mama. See? Enough for days. What are you so excited about? She thinks she saw a lady at Massabiel, all dressed in white with golden roses on her feet. Marie. What are you talking about? Marie, you promised. Well, that's what she said. She said... Benedette. It's true, Mama. At the cave at Massabiel, I saw a most beautiful lady. What lady? I don't know. Oh, what nonsense. Oh, no, Mama, she was there. Her face was beautiful. Just to look at her made me... Francois, you're just going to sit there? You heard what she said. She is showing off, making up a story to feel important. No, Papa. I really and truly saw the lady. Truly, I did. Stop it at once. Stop it. But I saw her. I saw the lady. <laughs> What is it? It's Bernadette. Well, she... I think she's dead, Mama. What happened? Where is she? At Madame Nicolas' house. Antoine found her near Massabiel. Oh, come, Mama. Hurry. This way, Madame Soudero. She's in here. She's much better now. Bernadette? It's all right, Mama. Bernadette, what happened to you out there? The lady was there, Antoine, a long time at the cave, and she spoke to me. Spoke to you? What did she say? She said, will you render me the grace of coming here each day for 15 days? And then she said, I cannot promise to make you happy in this world, only in the next. Bernadette, you're sure you're all right now? Oh, yes, Mama. There's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. You'll be the laughing stock of Lord. Come, Mama. Not a step will I take. Not a step till you promise never to go to Massabiel again. Never. But I can't promise that. The lady asked me to return every day for 15 days. Do as your mother says, Bernadette. I promise you, Mama, never to go to Massabiel again unless... You yourself give me permission. And that I can promise you'll never get. I'm going to send you to your Aunt Bernard, where you'll forget this foolishness. Now, home with you. Thank you for your kindness, Madame Nicolas. And you too, Monsieur Antoine. <laughs> Bernadette, <laughs> you're crying. What is it? Oh, Mama. Shh. They're all asleep. <gasps> What's the matter, my lad? Mama. The lady. Oh, she was so beautiful. Just to think of her makes me feel... Bernadette. Girls of your age often see things that don't exist. But it passes. Soon you'll be a woman. And you'll marry and have children. Life goes fast, my child. You'll send for Aunt Bernard. I'll live with her for a while, little one. She's your godmother. She loves you. It will be good. That is why we want her to live with you, Bernard. So you fear for her health? I fear for her reason. You don't know what it is to walk down the street and have everybody point you out as the father of... Of an idiot. The two people in the world who should be comforting and understanding. And you want to ship her off like a sack of flour. I am thinking only of... Of the... yourself. This is a wild story. But since the lady asked her to go to the cave for 15 days, she must go. I won't allow it. You will go with her. And what will people say? Nothing. Not if her mother takes her place at her side. I will go too and let anyone dare to laugh. not alone today. I ran ahead of the others. Mama is coming and Aunt Bernard and my sister and some other women too. I'm sorry but Mama wouldn't let me come by myself. Bernadette? Where is the lady? Is she there? Oh yes. She's standing there in the niche. She's smiling. See Aunt Bernard? Mama? We see nothing, child. But she's there. She is there. Then we will pray. 
all of us. Look at that newspaper. Lord officials sit idly by as religious fanatics run rampant. It's a scandal. It cries to heaven. Well, Mr. Mayor? It's fantastic. At first, only the girl, then a handful of women. But today, over 200, my policeman said. And how shall we stop it, Mr. Mayor? Don't ask me, Giacome. You're the police commissioner. The girl goes peacefully to the outskirts of town. There she kneels, says a rosary, and goes home again. All right, is there anything unlawful in that? Yes, on the grounds that it's insulting to religious sensibilities. That it's... it's... Oh, Dr. Dozo, I've been waiting for you. Mr. Mayor, gentlemen. Dr. Well, yes. you examined the girl. Our suspicions are confirmed. She's a lunatic? No, gentlemen. Well, what happened? I saw the Subaru girl kneel in front of the niche. She made a series of courteous, reverential gestures. I watched her face turn pale as white marble. The skin grow so taut that the structure of the skull appeared clearly marked at the temples. Cerebral anemia, Dr. Dozu? I took her pulse, practically normal, Dr. No catalepsy, no hysteria. Even her eyes' reflexes were normal. And shall we conclude, Doctor, that you have joined the ranks of believers? I'm a physician, Monsieur Dutour. I'm also a member of several scientific societies. I trust that answers you. Wait a minute. I have the answer. This is not for us to prosecute. The church, gentlemen. Subaru girl has mocked the church, devising visions and miracles. Let the church stop her. We'll see the Dean of Lourdes himself, Father Piramal. Sit down, gentlemen. Thank you, Father. Well, the mayor, the imperial prosecutor, and the commissioner of police. And I think I can guess what brings you here. The Subaru girl. Exactly, Father Piramal. I want you to know that the church attributes no religious significance whatsoever to these heathen gymnastics at Massabiel. Then you will talk to this... this girl and tell her that she... I will do nothing. This does not concern me, monsieur, or the church. But your reverence has enormous power over the people here. Wouldn't it be appropriate for you to raise your voice? I have no intention of adding further importance to this turmoil. But how can you stand by and see your parishioners carry on these pagan ceremonies? I understand that they're on a spot littered with filth. They pray to God. Prayer, gentlemen, is good, no matter where it is often. Oh, yes, yes. Shall we be going, gentlemen? Good day, gentlemen. Your reverence. Good day, Father. That sly fox. By agreeing with us, he dumps the entire problem right back in our laps. Get two of your policemen, Giacome. Have them bring Benedette Subaru to my office. Do you know who I am? Oh, yes, monsieur. You are the imperial prosecutor. Appointed by his majesty to punish anyone who perpetrates a fraud against this community. Yes, monsieur. Now, bearing that in mind, I ask you never again to go to Massa Biel. Oh, but I must, monsieur. The lady has asked me. Bernadette, you should take heed when intelligent people assure you that this lady is only an absurd dream. The first time I saw the lady, I thought it was a dream. But I have seen her now six times, monsieur. Once you can mistake something real for a dream, but not six times. Isn't it strange that until your first visit to Massabiel, your family was destitute? Now your father suddenly gets a steady job, and your followers have literally showered your household with clothing and food. I have not accepted a thing, monsieur. I know the lady would not like it. Good. So put your hand in mine and promise me that you will never again go to the cave at Massabiel. That I cannot promise, monsieur. I am the imperial prosecutor. I know, monsieur. You told me that before. Listen carefully. In the next room is the police commissioner. He is cruel and mean. Refuse me and I'll be forced to turn you over to him. I must keep my promise to the lady. Very well. This way, if you don't mind. What is your name? But you know my name, Monsieur Jacomet. I'm writing down everything you say. I warn you, be very careful. Yes, Monsieur. Now, who is this lady you claim to see? I don't know, Monsieur. Well, what does she wear? A white gown with a blue girdle. 
And there's a rose on each foot. And she stands quite still, does she, like a statue in church? Oh, no. No, she's ever so natural. She moves about and she talks to me. She even laughs. Do your parents believe the story of yours? No, monsieur. I do not think they do. And yet you expect me to believe. Now, pay attention. I'm going to read your answers back to you. Bernadette Subaru declares the lady wears a blue gown with a white girdle. No, a white gown and a blue girdle. You're contradicting yourself already. You said a blue gown. You must have made a mistake in writing it down, monsieur. Bernadette Subaru declares the lady resembled the statue of the Blessed Virgin in the parish church. No, that's not true. The lady has nothing to do with the Blessed Virgin in the church. Now, uh, tell me the names of all persons who are in league with you. And don't lie, because I know every one of them. I don't understand what you are saying, monsieur. Certain persons have put you up to this disgusting story. Now tell me, uh, who are these people? But you just said, monsieur, that you already know. The police are outside waiting to take you to jail. Now, unless you swear never to set foot again in Massapien. I must keep my promise to the lady. If the police take me, I can't help it. I'll have your mother and father thrown in jail, too. I, I, I'll see the... What the devil do you want? My child, that is all I want. Papa. Listen, Subiru, this business at the cave has got to stop. So help me, Commissioner, that is all I want, too. It is destroying my family. This girl is a minor. Forbid her to go out except to school. Lock her up if you have to. Because if you don't, I'll lock up the whole bunch of you. Now, get out. Well, Deter, what do you think of it? I think you were extremely fortunate that her father broke in just when he did. The girl's defeat... She is still awake, Francois. Close to dawn and she's still awake. She can't go on like this night after night. No. No, she can't. Bernadette, my poor little one, what have they done to you? Papa, if I can't go and see the lady anymore, I shall die. You shall see her. You will go to Massabiel and no one will prevent you. And if they lock me up, well, let them. But you shall see her. In a moment, we'll hear Act Two of Song of Bernadette. Make a friend, and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. In Paris, there's a statue of such an American, Myron T. Herrick, who was our ambassador to France in 1914. By June of that year, Mr. Herrick was preparing to return home after a most satisfactory tour of duty when the war began. The German ambassador asked Mr. Herrick to take over German interests in France. And Mr. Herrick not only agreed, but personally advanced the German ambassador $5,000 to move his staff out of France. Well, that was only the beginning. In addition to helping Americans who wished to return home, he handled the affairs of the Austrian government in France, also the Turkish, Serbian, Japanese and later those of Guatemala, Nicaragua, and Liberia. He helped set up a large hospital in New Year, and from his fellow Americans abroad, raised $500,000 to keep it going. At the end of two years, when he finally left for America, many letters of thanks went with him. One from the grateful French people said in part, Are you aware of what you have done for the sake of civilization and for France? We had hoped that you would have been kept here forever as the good genius the good friend, and the extraordinary ambassador. So it was that by going beyond the limits of his duty, Myron Herrick discovered that by helping others, you help your country. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of Song of Bernadette, starring Anne Blythe as Bernadette and Charles Bickford as Father Peyramal. It's a day later, and Father Peyramal, head of the church in Lord, is trying to ignore a procession that's halted outside his garden wall. Your reverence, your reverence, excuse me. What do you want? <clears throat> Who are you? Bernadette Subiru. Oh. So you're the urchin every idiot in France is talking about. Do your courtiers and servants always follow you? If any of that mob dare enter this garden, I'll have them arrested. Well, what do you want of me? This morning, Your Reverence, the lady, she told me... What lady? The lady in Massabiel. I don't know her. 
Oh, she's the beautiful lady who always comes to me. Who is she? Have you asked her her name? Yes, but she gives no answer. Then what does she say? Today the lady said, please go to the priests and tell them a chapel is to be built here. Oh, and have you the money with which to build this chapel? Oh, no, Your Reverence. No money at all. Then tell your lady that if she wants a chapel, she'll have to provide the funds. Yes, Your Reverence. You may also tell her that the Dean of Lourdes does not consider it very fitting for a lady to climb barefoot on rocks, to send gibbering adolescents with messages. And once and for all, he demands that she leave him in peace. Yes, Your Reverence. I'll tell her everything. Wait. You find your lady quite extraordinary, don't you? Oh, yes, Your Reverence. Good. I've heard there's a wild rose bush growing near the cave at Massa Biel. Oh, yes. Right under the niche where the lady stands. Splendid. I want you to tell her that the Dean of Lourdes would like her to perform a little miracle. He would like her to make the wild rose bush bloom. Now, in this last week of February. Do you understand? Yes, Your Reverend. Then repeat what I said. The Dean of Lourdes would like the lady to perform a little miracle to make the wild rose bush bloom now in this last week of February. Is that correct? Yes. Good day, Your Reverend. Be quiet, everyone. Be quiet. Can't you see she's kneeling? Bernadette is praying. Antoine, is that you? Yes, Boyette. Tell me what happens. My eyes... Yes, are... yes, I know, Bullet. Nothing will happen. Nothing. Be quiet, please. It is no use. The rose bush will not bloom. Will you be quiet? There are no miracles anymore. She sees something. Bernadette sees the lady again. How can you tell? She's smiling. Her face, it's lighted up. Is it... And then his reverend said he would like you to perform a little miracle. He would like you to make the wild rose bush bloom. Now, my lady. His reverend said, now. Go to the spring, Bernadette. Drink of the water and wash there. The spring? Go to the spring? You are turning toward the river. The spring, my child, not the river. The spring? Yonder, between the two rocks, and eat of the plants that grow there. Eat of the plants? And drink of the spring and wash there. Yes, my lady, yes. herself on the ground like a pig. She roots up the ground like a pig. Antoine, what's the girl doing? I don't know. The lady must have told her something. The rose bush. Is there any change? No, Bulget. Look at her now! Washing herself! Washing herself with dirt! <laughs> Mama, no! No, I must wash myself in the spring. The lady has asked me to. Bernadette, you are ill, my lamb. Eating these dirty roots. Covering yourself with earth. The spring. Don't you see, darling? Nothing dry as sand. Bernadette, Marie, come help me but with her. But she said there was. She said there was. Citizens of Lord, at last. You have seen what we officials have known all along. Yeah. You've been duped by an idiot. Yeah. I beg of you, go back to your homes and never return here again. Yeah. Yeah. They've gone, Bouviet. The girl in the crowd. It's all over. No roses, Antoine? Nothing. They tell us the Blessed Virgin is loving and good. Was she good to that girl just now? Was she good to me, me, Buriette, the finest stone cutter in Lourdes? I was carving a statue for the church. A chip of marble flew into my eye. That's how the Blessed Virgin repaid me, by throwing a stone in my eye. Well, I found my way here, Bouillette. and I can find my way back to Bouillette. town. 
by the cave. Water. Water from the ground. Water. Give me your hand. I, I hear a trickle. Feel it. It's gushing up. There is a spring. Water. Call them back. The others, quick, come back. Come back. She was right. A spring. There is a spring. <laughs> Doctor Dazu! Doctor Dazu! Uh, what is it? What's wrong? Uh, wrong! Wrong! It's a miracle. I can see. I put mud on my eyes from the spring, and now I can see! Yes, I heard what happened. No roses, eh? But a spring. All I did was to put mud on them from the spring, and then I said a little prayer, and, and now I can see. It's a miracle! Is it? Here. Yeah. Take a look at this chart. Uh, yes. Can you read the letters with your left eye? No, I can't. Yeah. Now try the right eye. No, I can't read them. Oh, both eyes then. Uh, no, good doctor. Now there you are then. But doctor, I never knew how to read. But I can see. I can see you. I can see everything. Doctor, Doctor Dudu. Uh, yes. What is it? Lafarge. Lafarge. They want you right away, doctor. Their baby. He's much worse. Well, I'll go right away. Uh, come back tomorrow, Juliet, when you're calmer. I can see! I can see! I'm afraid I do not understand, Dr. Dazu. You sent for me to examine that baby in there. Exactly, Dr. Dazu. I needed confirmation. But I have made a thorough examination. That infant is perfectly normal. Yes, that's all I want to know. Dr. Ledoux, I was summoned to this house late yesterday afternoon. The child had a fever of 105, convulsions and paralysis of both legs. That priest in there was administering the last rites. Well, but, but what happened? At 8 o'clock last night, when I told the parents that their child would die, the mother rushed to the crib, seized the baby, and ran to Masabio. That uh, spring they discovered. She bathed the child in the water. The child is well. You are asking me to believe the impossible? I am asking you to believe only what you've seen. Thank you, Dr. Ledoux. Bernadette, sit down. Sit down. Your reverence. Two days ago, I hoped never to see you again. But now I send for you. Does this give you satisfaction? Do you think you have humbled me? I do not understand your reverence. Nor do I. So you claim to have seen the lady again? Yes, your reverence. You told me to bring her a message from you. Yes, yes, I did. I asked for roses, and a spring appears. And because the spring appears, a blind man says he can see. And an infant child given up for dead is said to be restored. Did you ask the lady to do these things? No. No, only what you told me. Bernadette, this morning your godmother came to see me. Your Aunt Bernard. Aunt Bernard? And she told me that you had asked the lady to tell you her name. Yes, Your Reverence. And what did she answer? She said, I am the Immaculate Conception. And it is true that you asked your aunt and your mother the meaning of those words? It is true that you did not know. I did not know until they told me. But now you believe that your lady is the blessed mother of God herself. She did not say that, Your Reverence. She said, I am the Immaculate Conception. Bernadette, if the most blessed virgin were to speak, she could not say of herself, I am the Immaculate Conception. All she would say would be, I am the fruit of the Immaculate Conception. A person is not an event. Consequently, your lady is guilty of an inexcusable blunder. You must admit that. If I should see her again, I will tell her, Your Reverence. What am I to do with you, Bernadette? Your eyes seem honest, your words sincere, yet I cannot believe you. Now less than ever. Have you ever thought about your life and what your future will be like? Like the future of all girls hereabouts. After First Communion, girls may indulge in proper pleasures. 
They go to dances at the festivals, meet young men, and after a time, please God, they marry and have children. Wouldn't you like to be such a girl? Oh, yes. Yes, I'd like to go to dances and have a husband someday. Then wake up. Now. Otherwise, life is at an end for you. I'm warning you, Bernadette, you're playing with fire. And thanks to the persistence of our imperial prosecutor, we will finally put an end to these absurd pilgrimages to Massabiel. Tell him to talk. An old and obscure law, Jacomet. And no waters contained in springs, wells, streams, etc., etc., can be consumed by anyone until the waters have been thoroughly analyzed by a registered and competent chemist and found pure. <laughs> so you see, Jacobet, finding such a chemist, one meeting without approval, could take years. I have ordered the area around the spring in the cave boarded up. So we have finally wiped out the epidemic. Huh? And not quite. Not quite. To wipe out an epidemic, you must eliminate the cause. In this case, Bernadette Subaru. But nothing can happen at the cave if it's boarded up. But if the lady is merely a figment of Bernadette's imagination, she can see her any place, beside the river in the harbor where she lives, or if she wishes, on the very steps of this town hall. And then what, gentlemen? Yes, and then what? The next fence we must build must be around her imagination. Have you ever heard of Dr. Debeau? Debeau? He is a celebrated physician specializing in the treatment of the insane. Insane. Dr. Debeau, in answer to my letter, is arriving in Lourdes on Thursday. Why are you doing this, Dr. Debeau? Dr. Duzou said Please, that... mademoiselle, I am conducting this examination. Why are you so unsteady on your feet? Because I am very tired, monsieur. Then sit down. Now we shall continue. How many hours in the day? Twenty-four. How many days in the week? Seven. How much is seven times five? Thirty-five. How much is seventeen times eighteen? I, I do not know, monsieur. Ah, you do not know. Would you know the answer if you hadn't figured it out before? Uh, n not so fast, young lady. We've barely begun. Excuse me, please. I'm, I'm going home. It's all right, doctor. We'll go to her home. <laughs> This is it, Doctor, the Subaru home. Uh, Father Paramal. Monsieur Dutour? Uh, Father Paramal, this is uh, Dr. Debeau. How can I serve you? Uh, had we better go elsewhere, Father, and discuss the matter? It is you gentlemen who have chosen this place of action, not I. What do you want here? There is evidence of definite anomalies in the girl Bernadette, and I wish to place her under observation. If the girl does not willingly come, we will be in an unfortunate position of having to invoke the law of 1838. This is the most shameless piece of hypocrisy I have ever encountered. I warn you, I shall expose it. Bernadette, come here. Yes, Your Reverend. I know this girl. So do you, Dutour. She is neither a maniac nor a menace. If you intend to take her, gentlemen, well and good. But rest assured, I shall not stir from her side. Now call the police. And when the police come, what then, Your Reverence? When they come, I shall say to them, Load well your guns, for your path lies over my dead body. But we won't be here. Bernadette is sick. The police will find us in the hospital of the Sisters of Charity. The occupation of the Japanese city of Yokosuka is a good example of democracy at work. The first thing our troops had to do was clean up their own area. But then they looked at the devastation, the sickness, and the low morale of the people around them, and they set to work. To create better living conditions, they demolished rotten, rat-infested buildings. They converted unused buildings into schoolrooms, gymnasiums, and chapels. And with their own funds, they furnished much of the equipment. For health, they covered the city giving anti-tuberculosis shots, typhoid inoculations, x-ray pictures, and smallpox vaccinations. To raise the spirits of the people, they started boys' clubs, women's clubs, Red Cross groups. The occupation is over now, 
But the Japanese have had a taste of democracy. They like it. They've seen it work. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. We pause now for station identification. Curtain rises on Act Three of Song of Bernadette, starring Anne Blythe as Bernadette and Charles Bickford as Father Pedramal. <laughs> Bewildered and exhausted by the tumult she has raised, Bernadette Subaru has been taken to the hospital in Law, as the word miracle races across all of France. In the hospital, she has a visitor, a former schoolteacher, Sister Therese. You're feeling better, aren't you, Benedict? Oh, yes, sister. Dr. Duzu says I may go home in a few days. I welcome this opportunity to talk to you before I leave, Lord. You're leaving? I have been recalled to the mother house of our order at Nevers. Benedict, Father Perimal is on his way to speak to the bishop about you. The bishop? Oh, you've used your wiles successfully on a great many people. But there is one person who does not believe you. I never wanted you to believe me, sister. Be thankful you did not live in former times. Creatures who boasted of visions were burned at the stake. Good night, Bernadette. Good night, Sister Therese. So I have come to you, the bishop. Not so much in the cause of the church as in the cause of justice. The town officials in Lourdes are scheming and plotting the girl's destruction. Father Peramal, it is not the policy of the church to interfere in civil affairs. In my opinion, the change of policy is now necessary. Why? Because I wonder if she is not a true vessel of grace and a worker of miracles. My dear Dean, only the congregation of rites can determine whether a given phenomenon is a miracle or a deception. That's all I ask. The commission be set up to investigate. You realize, of course, what this may mean. The commission can render only one of three decisions. First, you're an imposter, little Subiru. Hence, away with you to a prison. Second, you're insane, little Subiru. Away with you to an asylum. And third... You are the rarest of mortal beings, little Subaru. When do you think the commission will begin its work? Never. Investigation is impossible with the spring and the cave boarded up. A letter from you as bishop will force them to open it. Oh, no. The emperor of France must command it. When will you ask the emperor? Again, never. Very well, Your Excellency. However, only yesterday I received an inquiry from Her Majesty the Empress. I will see that the facts are brought to her attention. Your Excellency. The facts, I said, not conjecture, not hopes, not surmises. I will suggest absolutely nothing. My attitude puzzles you, doesn't it? Frankly, yes. I'm giving your lady of Massabiel a chance to prove herself. If she is the Blessed Virgin, then nothing is impossible for her. However, if she's a fraud, Massabiel will remain boarded up, and any thought of a commission will vanish into thin air. I wonder, my dear Dean, who will win? <laughs> We've been disgraced to tour, humiliated. As mayor of Lord, I demand... Demand? You demand? This order's from the Emperor of France. What we have done is for the good of the people. Then go to Paris and tell him so. Tear down the fence, Jacques Come in, Bernadette. You're wondering why I've sent for you? What could it be, Father, but the commission of His Excellency? They want to question me again, but I've told them over and over, month after month, I've told them. No, I wanted to see you, not the commission. Bernadette, Father Pomian tells me you're going to work. Oh, yes, Father, I've been so lucky. Madame Millette wants to take me as a housemaid. And that pleases you? Oh, so much. The work won't be hard, and i It's strange. The lady once told me I could never be happy in this world, but... But I am 
happier than I've ever been. I'll have a position. And Antoine is a splendid young man. Antoine? No. No. Bernadette, the commission is writing a very important report about you. It admits the possibility that you were chosen by the powers above and that your hand alone brought forth the spring and is responsible for miraculous cures. Do you understand what that means? No. It means that the greatest and the wisest men in the church will be watching you for decades. And then, perhaps long after the rest of us are dead, you will be... No, Father. No, no. Tell me. Are not the sisters in the hospital and the school good and kind? Yes. Yes, they are. Sweet and kind. Could you imagine yourself as one of them someday? Oh, dear God, that's far above me. You like the life with the sisters at Nevers. And you already know one of them, Sister Therese. I, I would do exactly as you say, Your Reverence, but I... You're worried about your father and mother. You needn't be. I've arranged for your father to be permanently established in the mill. Your family can now live without fear of poverty. Your reverence. Just one more thing. Something that has always troubled me, little one. Those words, immaculate conception. If you could ever admit that this phrase was not spoken by the lady, things might be very different. If you could retract this single incident then there might be somewhere in this world a little corner where you could hide and lead a normal life. Would you like a little time to think it over? I don't need time, Your Reverence, because I have never lied to you. Did I speak of lying? And I don't want a corner to hide in. Forgive me. Just a moment, Sister Therese. Bernadette, I said goodbye to you once this morning, and then I remembered this. Long ago, it was taken away from you because you didn't know your catechism. The picture, the holy picture. I thought you might still like to have it. Oh, more than anything. Sometimes to express certain things in a letter is difficult. If you ever need me, just send me this picture. And I shall come immediately. Now, now get in the carriage. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye. Bernadette. God bless you. Sister Bernadette. Yes, Sister Turin. Come here, please. I notice you're affecting a limp. It's nothing, sister. Mm. Perhaps such menial work as scrubbing the floors is too hard for you. There is no compulsion here to do any work, if you so choose. Oh, no. I like to work, and I am not fit for anything else. You forget I have known you a long time. In the outside world, you were celebrated. From all over France, people came just to gaze upon you. Here, you're a nobody. You find that difficult to bear, don't you? Oh, no. Truly, sister, I, I wish only to be one of you, nothing more. Long ago, I was forced to doubt you. I have not changed. I have never told you an untruth. I have tried to believe you. Only God knows how hard I've tried. But I cannot... What is it you don't believe, Sister Therese? What everyone else is so willing to believe. The lady. Oh, but I did see her. I did. Many agree with you. Even the Holy Father in Rome. But I do not. I cannot. What do you know of suffering? Nothing. In all our sacred history, the chosen ones have always been those who have suffered, as I have forced myself to suffer. Why, then, should God choose you? Why not me? I cannot answer that. 
I don't know why I was chosen. You are a thousand times more worthy. If only I could find evidence. If only you could give me some proof. I wish Maybe I could. then I could believe. Oh, for the love of God, sister. Give me some proof. I do wish I could help you, but I have never suffered. Perhaps I can help you. It may be there is proof for you. My leg. May I lift my habit? I lifted it. My leg. Oh! Oh! God in heaven! How is our sister? Years ago, I treated Bernadette for asthma. One does not limp from asthma. I... I cannot understand it. She never complained of pain. What is it? In addition to a large tumor on her knee, she has tuberculosis of the bone. The constant pain and suffering so characteristic of this disease is too horrible to describe. You seem a trifle stronger today, Sister Bernadette. Yes, thank you, Mother Superior. Shall you sew this morning, Sister? Or shall I carry you over to the window? I will sew if I may, Sister Therese. Sister Therese and I were discussing last night the possibility of your taking a trip to Lord. Lord? Should not you, of all people, avail yourself of the benefit that's come to the whole world through you? The waters of the spring... So many have been helped. That cannot be done. But why not? The spring is not for me. Did the lady tell you that, my child? She said, I cannot promise you happiness in this world, only in the next. The spring is not for me. Sister! Sister Benedict! <laughs> Can you hear me, Sister Bernadette? His Excellency the Bishop, Father Peramal, and many of the clergy are here. Try to speak, Sister. His Grace wants to hear from your own lips a final confirmation. Sister, we shall read to you the final report of the Commission of Investigation. We ask only that you confirm your testimony. Do you feel equal to that? On February 11th, 1858, I, Bernadette Subiru, was sent in the company of my sister Marie and my friend Jeanne Abadie to fetch firewood. Do you confirm this? I did see her. At a location known as Massabiel, I rested while my sister and friend went about their task. Do you confirm this? I did see her. For a time, nothing happened. And then suddenly, in a niche in the rocks above the cave, I saw... I did see her. I did see her. I did see her. <laughs> she is too ill. Let her have peace. My child. I didn't lie to you. God knows you didn't. They questioned me again and again. I saw her. Tell them I saw her. They won't believe me. Yes, my little one. You saw her. And you will see her again. I'm not so sure. Maybe I haven't suffered enough. You've suffered enough for the heaven of heaven. No. day is this? Wednesday. Wednesday. Tomorrow will be Thursday. It was on a Thursday she first came to me. Madame? Madame? The lady won't come here, Your Reverence. I'll never see her again. 
You will, my child. No. Oh, I was stupid and lazy. I don't even know what the Holy Trinity is. Mother, where are you? Where are you? She's gone. I won't see her. I'll never see her again. I'll never. Bernadette? Madame, I love you. I love you. Holy Mary, Mother of God. You are now in heaven and on earth. Your life begins, O Benedict. In a moment, our stars will return. Our servicemen around the world have a wonderful opportunity to observe new customs and traditions. And they're finding out that these ideas of other people aren't so strange after all. For instance, nearly every country has its own customs about harvest time. In Japan, when the new rice is harvested, there are celebrations in the fields. Gifts are exchanged, just as we do at Christmas time. And ceremonies are held in front of the family shrines. In Europe, the harvest is frequently inaugurated with dancing and festivals. Well, all this might sound strange, but as our servicemen have observed... We have a version of the very same thing in our culture. Nearly every high school and college has a harvest festival or an autumn ball. The Granges and other organizations of farmers hold special dances or meetings when the crops come in. And even our celebration of Halloween with its symbols of pumpkins and corn stalks is a very old custom at harvest time. The same is true of customs and traditions of all countries. The way of doing things may be different, but the ideals are the same. And they're important to the people who follow them. Our servicemen are helping to maintain goodwill by observing the customs of other people in other lands. Now, here's Mr. Cummings with our stars. And here they are, coming forward to the footlights. Anne Blythe and Charles Bigfoot. <laughs> A truly beautiful performance by both of you. Thank you, Irving. I know Mr. Bigfoot has played the part before, but it was a wonderful privilege for me. It was a pleasure for me, too. You know, Anne, Charlie is one of my oldest and dearest friends in Hollywood. Let's not go into just how old <laughs> friends we are, of you. <laughs> we are practically landmarks in Hollywood. <laughs> Let's talk about some new arrivals. How about little Timothy McNulty? <laughs> oh, he's just the most beautiful baby in the whole world. I wouldn't be surprised with such a beautiful mother. You don't think I'm prejudiced about him, do you? Of course not. We're the ones who are prejudiced. <laughs> Listen in next weekend, and we will take you to the beautiful redwood country of Northern California and the outdoor drama of The Big Trees, filmed by Warner Brothers. It's the story of an attempt by unscrupulous loggers to destroy the giant redwoods. And as our stars, one of your favorites, Van Heflin, co-starring with one of our most promising young actresses, Nancy Gates. I certainly won't miss it. Good night. Good night. Good night. It was a perfect evening. Hollywood Radio Theater is produced by Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is directed by Rudy Schrager. This is your announcer, Ken Carpenter, inviting you to be with us again next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>